Hello and welcome to section 3 of our course. In this session, we are going to apply regression models on different datasets. This video is about downloading and inspecting the dataset. So, first we will go to Kegel's website and then download the dataset from there and then inspect it and get familiar with it. Specifically, in this video, we are going to download California housing dataset from Kegel, load data in a pandas data frame. We will inspect the dataset and get familiar with it and we will deal with missing value. We will see that the dataset has some missing values and we will discuss techniques to handle them. So let's get started. So just to be clear, in the previous section, we solved a classification problem. In this section, our problem is regression. So that's why we need a different dataset. California housing dataset is a famous dataset. It's available on this URL. And uh, if you go to the data link, you will find housing.csv file if you just download it. So I downloaded and copied the file into a local folder of this notebook from where I launched the notebook. And it has a subfolder data and another subfolder housing. As you can see, I am in the path code and data and then housing. And this there. It's containing the housing.csv file that I just downloaded. So in our notebook, we first import the usual stuff and then we declare two variables, local directory and local file. And the local directory is obtained by joining the OS paths of data and housing together uh, using the os.path facility, which is available in Python. And then we create another path that is going till the file level. Import pandas and numpy as usual and read the CSV file into a data frame, print the head. So we have a bunch of features like longitude, latitude, which pertain to the location. It's a housing data set. So these are all features related to housing. And one row pertains to one single house. It's an old data set. As you can see, it's from the 1990 California census. It although it may not help you with predicting current housing prices, as it says on the Kegel website, like Zillow is estimate dataset, it does provide an accessible introductory dataset for teaching people about the basics of machine learning. So that's the purpose of this dataset. Now it's not so a small dataset, it's a pretty large dataset. From the housing prices perspective, it's pretty large. So as you can see, when I print the info, it has 20,640 entries, numbered 0 to 20,639. Longitude feature has a full number of entries and similarly latitude, housing, median age, total bedrooms, total rooms, population of that particular area, households in that area, median income in that area, and the median housing value whether the house location is proximity of the ocean and so on. And so these are the features that they have collected and our job is to determine if these features can act as predictors of the house value. So our target variable is the median house value. As you can see, there are 20433 entries in total bedrooms column. So there are some entries missing. To be specific, there are 207 entries missing. Now, another thing about the data set is that the ocean proximity feature is categorical. It contains strings which are saying near bay and so on. So let's print out all the possible values that the ocean proximity uh, feature can take. We can get the column name and then the value counts for any categorical variable. And so it shows us that this one H ocean string is appears 9136 times, inland appears 6551 times, and so on. And as you can see, the island value appears only five times, which is a very imbalanced data set. And so it really doesn't help us in our predictions, as you can imagine. We should probably get rid of these five rows which have the value island. So the way to do that in pandas is have the data frame reassigned to 
another data frame which is extracted by filtering out the ocean proximity wherever it is not equal to island and now we again get the value counts and we see there are only four possible different values in ocean proximity column when we describe the data frame it shows us all the usual statistics that a pandas data frame describe method does and as you can see all the counts are there mean standard deviation and minimum maximum and the percentiles 25th 50 and 75 for each of the columns and in this case the statistics only make sense for numerical columns so the categorical columns or in this case if there is only one categorical column so that has been filtered out let's plot the histogram of all the values in this data set all the numerical values so here we got the histogram of over nine values so we can see how the distributions look like just to get more familiar with the data set one thing very noticeable about these histograms is that they are on a very different scale so the number of households as you can see are in the thousands in the two thousands and so on and whereas the median housing age is in years which is like 10 20 30 and so on. the and the y-axis obviously shows the counts of each of these values and latitude is again floating point number like 34 36 and so on same for the longitude as a negative number this is our target variable and it is in the range of 100,000, 200,000 and so on up to 500,000. So it seems like it has been capped to 500,000. So if there was any house higher than 500,000, they have been removed from this data set for ease of analysis. Similarly, the median income has been scaled to some sort of scale like it. We usually see numbers like 2, 4, 6, 8 and so on. So it has probably from thousands uh, per year or like 20,000 has been scaled to two or and similarly 40,000 has been scaled to four or so and so on. So there has been some scaling done on median income. Other than that, you can see a few of the distributions are kind of skewed towards the left or towards the right and they have a long tail like total bedrooms has a long tail. By the way, this is showing total bedrooms of that particular area, the total bedrooms in all houses in that area. So it's not really for a single house. Similarly, total rooms are again in the, they have a long tail going flat around from like 10,000 to 20,000. Now to deal with missing values, we have three options. We only have one column, remember, with missing values here. So what we can do is we can drop the rows containing the missing values we can drop the whole column that has missing values and for numerical columns we can impute or estimate the values with the mean median or some other statistic of the column so we can replace the missing values those nulls with either the mean of that column or the median of that column or some other statistic pertaining to that column first one is a viable solution we can get rid of the missing values but like getting rid of 207 missing values is not really recommended. Maybe in this case it might be okay because the 207 is a very small fraction of 20,000 odd rows we have. But generally that is not a good solution. We should actually impute as much as we can unless we have a very large data set and we are not expecting our predictions to be off by much if we remove all the rows. Dropping an entire column is really drastic and we shouldn't be doing that in most cases. It doesn't really make sense unless we determine from other means by feature analysis that this column is really not important in predicting. If we want to go for option one, the command to do that in pandas is this df dot drop na drop null values and we give a subset keyword argument saying total bedrooms so from this specific column wherever this column is found to be null drop that row option two dropping the whole column drop total bedrooms x is equals one and option three let's say we are imputing with the median df total bedrooms dot median we just first calculate the median of the column and then we use the fill na function on the 
total bedrooms column and we pass the median calculated median from the previous step but in scikit-learn there is a module called imputer which provides us different options for imputing and median is also one of them and we will use that instead of creating our own solution for imputation so let's do that in the next video one thing i want to mention that there is a version of california housing data set which is also provided by scikit-learn so if you go from scikit-learn data sets and import fetch underscore california underscore housing let's look at the feature name and this data set is also available but it has one less feature as you can see there is no categorical feature similarly there are no missing values in the average bedrooms these are average bedrooms whereas in our data set they are total bedrooms and there are some minor differences in other features as well so we are going to use the other data set that we downloaded from kegel because that has missing values and that has a categorical variable as well added so it's much better for teaching and getting ourselves more practice with machine learning and regression problems you can load this data frame into another data frame and see its head and then info on your own just to practice and see what are the differences between the two